Welcome back here to the last segment on the show to recap some best remaining free agents out there on the market. It isn't like there isn't no options out there that no one's signing any of these players. I'm pretty surprised that a good amount of these guys are still remaining out there for teams to sign. So I thought I'd recap it here a little bit. We haven't talked about free agents in a while. And there's still some good names out there that I really believe can contribute a lot to any team that decides to sign them this offseason. And I know heading into training camp, I know after the draft, you really don't know what you have in these players currently. So I guess from one aspect, I can sort of understand why teams haven't signed them. But now once we get more into a more intense workout, more intense situations, you don't want to see injuries happen, but that's the reality. They do happen in training camp especially. So maybe you don't want to see it if somebody goes down, one of these guys could step in or just come in and help out any of these rosters right away. Starting off with my best remaining free agent right off the bat is Stefan Gilmore. Um, 34 years old, it might scare a few people, but not really myself because he played all 17 games last year for the Dallas Cowboys. And right now, about a market value for a guy of his caliber with 34 years old, you know, taking that into account, probably you're looking around $10 million to $12 million per year, I would have to guess, according to SpotRack. They have their market value for Stephon Gilmore at about 9 to 10 So anywhere from that range, I think... Um, any of these teams could be looking to to try and sign him for a one-year salary, I think would be most likely. His resume speaks for himself. He is still a number one corner, in my opinion, in this league. Has five Pro Bowls. You're talking about a defensive player of the year, all pro selection. He definitely still has a year or two left at that level. And then past that, you know, I don't know how his contract situation will pan out. But for right now, I think he certainly can help a lot of teams out there. But the best ones that I thought of were the New York Jets lining him up across from uh, Sauce Gardner would be one of the best duos in the National Football League. Also in that same division, the Buffalo Bills after moving on from Tredavious White. I know they have Kair Elam, but other than that, it's still a little bit shaky there. So I think he could fit there with them. The Jacksonville Jaguars, again, Maybe it's just me and my lack of knowledge around the Jacksonville Jaguars, but at corner, I don't think they have too many prominent names there. And also the Cincinnati Bengals, after moving on from Chidobe Awuzie, again, don't really have too many experienced guys there. I think he could certainly help out in that department. In a AFC North where you have Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, George Pickens, and uh, Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, all these guys are going to need a good corner to combat that. And I think the Bengals are certainly lacking in that department but he is number one I think he should probably be signed the quickest but moving on from him another guy in the secondary Justin Simmons with him 30 years old an expensive contract so that might scare a few people away but with the safety market and not really being um at least in terms of free agents not being of the highest priority for a lot of teams that seems like another devalued position more and more in the NFL but Justin Simmons still I think could bring a lot of good things to a team Um, he uh, led the Denver Broncos in interceptions last year considered one of the best at his position at one point in time not too far away from where we are right now so I think he still has a lot to give he was arguably the leader and the quarterback on that defense for the Denver Broncos and now they felt confident enough in Pat Sertan to move on from him and also For salary cap reasons, they had to move on. So it's not like it was for a lack of talent or a lack of just um, ability. He still has a lot to give. I think a team like the Indianapolis Colts, with how young they are in the secondary, bringing in a guy with Justin Simmons' experience can certainly help quarterback that team a lot better. The Jacksonville Jaguars, again, they brought in Darnell Savage. Having him alongside Justin Simmons could be very interesting for their secondary. And also the New York Jets, again, at safety, they have Chuck Clark and another player that I forgot the name of just now, but not too prominent in that position either. So bringing in Justin Simmons again, if they're going to go all in like they have already shown this offseason, I think bringing him in again would sort of reinforce that and just make them overall a lot better in an AFC that you're definitely going to need defensive help with how explosive it is on offense dealing with 
I don't have to name them, all the offensive players and great offensive players that you find yourself with in the AFC. So he's number two for me. At number three, we have Connor Williams showing some love to the offensive line. He is coming off a pretty severe ACL tear, so uh, that's something that will scare off a lot of teams. But he is only 27 years old, and up until last year when he tore his ACL for the Miami Dolphins, he, he had only missed two games in, um, in 2020 through 2022 for the Dallas Cowboys um, and the Miami Dolphins. So durability really shouldn't be too much of a question. I know the ACL is its own category, so people are a little bit more sensitive around it but, and for good reason. But I think he's at a very good age. He's able to play guard or center, so that just raises his stock even more. And to me, he fits in teams like the Denver Broncos. You bring in a, a, a new young quarterback in Bo Nix. Zach Wilson also trying to reinvigorate his career. Jared Stidham, if you want to throw him in there as well. You need someone with experience playing center at that position. I think Connor Williams can certainly help those guys out. Then you look at the Arizona Cardinals. Their offensive line hasn't been the greatest. He could fit in right away and just improve that line. Maybe if they already have a center somewhere along um, playing guard for them as well. And also the Washington Commanders. Similar to the Denver Broncos, Jaden Daniels. You bring in a guy of Connor Williams' capability. He already knows that division. Um... The Commanders have already brought over Tyler Biotish, so what's another former Dallas Cowboy to bring over with Dan Quinn? Playing guard or center, I think, would be his best bet, and he would definitely help out that young offense trying to make an improvement in 2024. Then, Xavier Howard, another former Dolphin, still very much capable to be a number one defensive back in this league. Um, he has had some off-the-field issues that I'm not quite so sure I can mention on here for just the um, nature of it so I won't be doing that but you if you guys are interested more on it you guys can look it up he has those things going so I don't know how that does affect his availability and uh, what those legal issues are but that is something that could scare off teams away he's 31 years old has been dealing with some injuries but I don't think it's been too severe where it really becomes a major problem he could work around it usually just ankle injuries, hamstring injuries, so it's not too big of a deal. And just what he did over his time with Miami, led the league in interceptions at one point as well. He could find himself very comfortably in teams like the Cardinals, who need a lot of defensive help. Also, the Los Angeles Rams. They brought in Tredavious White and uh, Darius Williams. Xavier Howard could really round off this cornerback group and make them very tough to be in uh, in coverage just overall. And also the Los Angeles Chargers. Other than Asante Samuel Jr., I don't think they have too many great um, options at corner. So pairing him up with Derwin James, Asante Samuel, with already Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack in there as well, I think it makes this team a lot more balanced on that side of the ball. So he's number four. And the last guy I'll talk about is another one of the big guys. DJ Humphreys, a starting left tackle, in my opinion, in this league. Only 30 years old, pretty young, or pretty much in that prime of left tackles. You have the experience, you still have the athletic and physical prowess out there to compete with some of these great pass rushers, especially when you're going up against um, Nick Bosa in that division. Um, that actually might be the only one, or just that 49ers defensive line in general. Um, is very hard to deal with. He's coming from that experience, only released because of the salary cap and working out his contract they couldn't agree upon. So again, it wasn't for a lack of talent. And with him at left tackle, a very important position on that offensive line. He could start for a lot of teams, in my opinion, and was one of the best offensive linemen for the Cardinals in general last year. So he's very much capable of starting. And I think the Chiefs is an interesting one because I know they drafted a... Uh, a left tackle, I want to say, at some point in this draft to try and fit in. They got rid of their starting left tackle last year in the Super Bowl. So I think bringing in DJ Humphreys right away to just fill that gap and solidify that offensive line could be a great um, situation there. Also, the Washington Commanders, not too um, of a secure offensive line, and you definitely need that for Jaden Daniels. Protecting his blind side will certainly be something they could be interesting in, interested in. And finally, the Green Bay Packers, because they also drafted a left tackle in the um, first round. I know a lot of Packers fans were pretty surprised by that. 
and they have a second year left tackle right now penciled in to start comparing that to TJ Humphreys I don't think is much of a comparison he could jump in right away and be their starting left tackle and for that offense to have a anchor there at left tackle and not have to worry about um, that side of the line too much would be such a premium for a team that is really building on their momentum from last year to be a prominent team in 2024 but those are the top five remaining free agents in my opinion those are the ones that I think should get signed first and foremost and that have made a good case for themselves to join any team and be a major contributor to any team in 2024 but that's my list let me know if I missed out on someone or if I just had him in the wrong order or what your guys' thoughts are on team fits for any of the players that I just mentioned in my list but with that being said, that will wrap it up for us on today's show of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Please remember to follow the show and the network all over social media on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok for more of the network's content. And also, if you want to see more of me and this show, check out the GSMC Sports Network channel and the GSMC Podcast Network channel on YouTube for a lot more content around the NFL. And as a final reminder, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more football discussions and NFL conversations with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host. Thank you guys for joining me on today's show, and I'll expect to see you guys all back here again to wrap up the week with me again tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go.